Today we'll be discussing Varignon's theorem. Well, what is that, you might ask? That's a good question. Varignon's theorem states that the midpoints of the sides of an arbitrary quadrilateral join to form a parallelogram. Well, there are a couple words in that that you might not understand, such as midpoint, quadrilateral, and parallelogram. Well, I'll help you out with that right now. A midpoint is defined as the middle point of a line segment of uh, the side of a shape in geometry, really uh, any sort of line that has two definitive ends can have a midpoint. Uh, going back to our definition, there's another word here that you might not know, quadrilateral. Well, let's discuss that. What is a quadrilateral? Also a good question. Well, a quadrilateral is defined as any shape having four sides. So this index card, for instance, it's very observable that it has one, two, three, four sides, making it a quadrilateral. But what about a weirder shape like this one right here? Well, it still has one, two, three, four sides, making it a quadrilateral, even though it looks a little strange. And last but not least in our theorem, we have the word parallelogram. Well, a parallelogram is a type of quadrilateral. But what is a parallelogram? It's defined as a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, just like this index card here. It's a rectangle, but it does have one set of parallel sides here and another one here, giving it two pairs of parallel sides and making it a parallelogram. So, now that we understand all the parts of our theorem, let's show that it actually works. So, let's take some random quadrilateral, like this playing card right here. It will work with anything. As you can clearly see, I take in the midpoints here, 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 and here, and I connected them, and I formed a parallelogram indicated by this arrow and this arrow here indicating that these two lines are parallel and this arrow and this double arrow and this double arrow here indicating that this and this line are also parallel. But what about a weirder shape like the one that we saw earlier? Well, it still works. Even though it is a convex quadrilateral, if we connect the midpoints here, 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 and here, then we'll still see that we'll get two pairs of parallel lines, making it a, a parallelogram. Now we've seen that the theorem actually works. It is important to note that the theorem goes on to state that if the quadrilateral is convex, then the area of the parallelogram will be half of the area of the entire quadrilateral. Convex meaning that it looks like this, and not like this, where some of the sides go into the body of the quadrilateral. Now, a little background information on the person who actually came up with this theorem. His name was Pierre Varignon, as you can tell by his name. Uh, he was a French mathematician. He lived from 1654 to 1722. He was educated at Jesuit College and the University in Caen. He was a professor of mathematics at the Collège Mazarin and the Collège Royal. He was a member of several important academic societies, like the Académie Royale de Sciences, the Berlin Academy, and the Royal Society, and he was inducted in these years. Uh, being a member of the Royal Society, he was friends with Isaac Newton, with the likes of Leibniz and the Bernoulli family, and was obviously a very well-respected and important mathematician. Um, now that we know about Varignon himself and his theorem, we can go on to prove it. So, we're going to prove uh, Varignon's theorem right here. It states that midpoints of a quadrilateral form a parallelogram. And here, right here, are two pre-John quadrilaterals for convenience. Uh, they're both a little bit differently shaped, as you can kind of see that when we draw P, Q, and R, S as midpoints of this quadrilateral and uh, P prime, Q prime, R prime, and S prime as midpoints of this quadrilateral, they kind of both look like parallelograms, but that's not enough. We're going to have to prove that. Um, real quick, just to recall a few things, a 
quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides and four vertices, and a parallelogram is a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel. And this is what we're going to be wanting to prove. Um, that this is the case for these quadrilaterals inside here. Um, now, here's the tidbits of information that we're going to need to prove this. Uh, parallel lines form like angles by Euclid's fifth postulate. Um, and I'll give an example of that below. Two triangles are similar if they have the same corresponding angles, and we denote similarity between triangles with this um, symbol right here. And similar triangles have proportional corresponding sides. So in this example a little below, we see that we have triangle ABC and A prime, B prime, C prime. Uh, this triangle right here is a bit bigger than this one, but uh, I've drawn in that we have this angle is the same as this angle, this angle is the same as this angle, and these are the same as well. From that, we can say that um, the corresponding sides are proportional, such as A over A prime is going to be the same as B over B prime, it's going to be the same as C over C prime. <laughs> okay? And here's the proof. So take any triangle, or take the triangle ABD that we had previously, actually on the previous one, and we'll just be proving with that one first. We'll start there. So we'll draw in that P is our midpoint, and that's where we're going to start, uh, and then draw a line across that is parallel to DB. So what we're assuming at the beginning is this step right here. We're assuming that P is the midpoint, so this side is the same as this side, which that's what that notation right there means. And that this line right here is parallel to this line, which is what these blue arrows indicate. And we want to show, we want to show that Q must be a midpoint as well, so that these two lines are parallel if Q is a midpoint, and then that ends up proving everything, which I'll explain in a little bit. So as uh, these two lines are parallel, then we know that based on our first uh, point that I recalled about parallel lines forming uh, like angles, that angle D is the same as angle APQ and angle B is the same as angle AQB, which I've written right here. This right here implies that um, this large triangle and this smaller triangle AQP are similar. They're similar as, well, these two angles are the same, and um, these two angles are the same. Let me draw that real quick. Uh, that's the same as this right here. And we have, this is the same as this one. And up top, well, this right here is just the same as each one. It's the same angle. As each three of these angles are all the same, these two triangles are similar because of that. Uh, from that, we get that since these two triangles are similar, they must have the same corresponding, um, or their corresponding sides must be proportional. Now, this side right here is halved. So this side right here is going to have to be halved as well. That's what it means to be proportional. <coughs> um, so we know that this side and this side must be the same, as this side and this side must be the same. Thus, Q must be OK, as we just proved that uh, Q must be a midpoint, we can use that to finish our proof. We know that this line right here is parallel to this line now as Q must be a midpoint, and it, the same happens for the rest of the triangle, the bottom half, or the rest of the quadrilateral, the bottom half of the quadrilateral, which is a very, very similar case. We could do the exact same thing and find out that this line right here is parallel to this line. And we found earlier that this line is parallel to this line. So, therefore, this line and this line are both parallel. Now, if we just do everything we just did before, turn everything clockwise 90 degrees, one way or the other, we get the same thing. We end up getting that this line is parallel to this line. 
And we do that by splitting it along this way, and we get the left triangle and the right triangle, and do all the same work that we just did. Thus, uh, the points formed from the midpoints of this main quadrilateral, P Q R S, is a parallelogram. So, Bernoulli's theorem can also be proved with vectors. So, a little background information about vectors first. Vectors represent both a direction and a magnitude within some plane of space. And so, if vectors can be added, so say you go from point A to point B, and then point B to point C, that's the same as going from A to C, and we would say that vector AB plus BC is equal to a vector AC. Vectors can also be multiplied, so like scalar multiplication, where it's not multi uh, the, we're not multiplying the vector by a, another vector, but a whole number. And what that does is it changes the magnitude, but the direction stays the same, unless in the special case that you multiply the vector by a negative number, in which case the vector would have the same scalar multiplication, like the same scalar magnitude change, but the direction would reverse. And so, applying this to the theorem, Say that we have our triangle that's top, the top half of some arbitrary quadrilateral, and we go from, we take the each side to represent a vector, going from point A to B, and then from point B to C is the same as going to AC, as we have here, the vec as we denoted here with vector addition, and then B, P, B to B, Q is the same as P, Q, as we have here, for, again with vector addition. And then we note that the vectors B, P, B from B, Q are one half of vectors A, B and B, C, respectively. And that would imply that P, Q is then one half of A, C. And as we mentioned before, vectors are represent a direction, and since then AC is just a scalar multiple of PQ, we know that the two vectors must have the same direction, which implies that the lines that they represent are parallel.